Okay, let's continue. So our goal is to compute the size of the image of our alpha. And, um, and we have that uh, alpha of x, y is x modulo squares and x is uh, m over e squared. So uh, what can happen? m can be 0. Um, yeah, when m is 0, then uh, we are in the second case that uh, alpha of t is b. So this just leads to uh, b mod squares. This is squares. Uh, is in the image. What else can happen? So if a squared minus 4b is a square, um, let's call it b, then we have two points with y equal to zero, namely minus a plus d over two, zero, and minus a minus d over two, zero. And they, uh, they will be in the image, so this minus a plus d over two, and this will be in the image, so um, the hard part will now be when m and n uh, are not zero. So here n was zero uh, and here m was zero. What happens if none of those are zero? Then we can write um, just our equation from the curve and plug in x and y um, or m over e squared and n over e cubed. And then we get this. Or this. And um, in an earlier lecture, we proved that, um, that those two things are more or less co-prime, we prove that the greatest common divisor is bounded uh, independent um, of x and y, only depending on e uh, by, uh, by a number r. So, so this is almost a square, but we, we want to be explicit and uh, concrete, so um, Let B1 be plus or minus the GCD of M and B. And we want M B1 to be positive. So then we have M. We can write it like this. B, we can write it like this and the GCD of M1 to is M and M1 is greater to than zero. So this is just um, putting this into formal equations. We, since this is a GCD, we can, we can write this. And since B1 is the GCD, the, uh, the rest of course is co-prime and we just, uh, we have M1 is positive. Now we put this this whole thing in the equation of the curve, or basically in this one. Uh, and then we get So, uh, what do we have? Now, this, 
and this is co-prime since uh, the GCD of M1 uh, and B2 is 1 and um, oh wait, 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 and the GCD of E and M1 is 1. Um, did I have this? Yeah, this is correct. Is it correct? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so this and this is co-prime and um, the rest that was uh, the thing that destroyed our, the co-prime uh, before is, uh, is here in this B1. So, and this, this, since this whole thing um, is a square and those are co-prime, uh, they each have to be a square. So M1 has to be a square and this whole thing has to be a square. Um, and, and this whole thing in the brackets is a square. Okay, so if we now factor, um, oh wait, do I have a typo here? see. Okay, what we want to do now is n over b1 into m times m, n, where m uh, squared is m1, And n squared, I think we have a square here, yeah. And n squared is um, this in the brackets. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we now so we just assume that uh, we, we found some factorization of this like that. And if we now put um, uh, this one in, wait. If you put this one in here, so this uh, m1 is equal to m squared, we put it here. Then we have uh, m to the 4 here and m squared here. So how does that help us? So if we have now um, a point um, with non-zero coordinates in E of Q, then we, are, we knew before that we can put it in the form m over E squared, but now we um, we actually put it in the form
x is equal to b1 m squared over e squared and y is equal to b1 mn over e cubed in lowest terms. So why is that? Um, oops. Well, it's it's basically because um, no, no, no. we factored this m. Where is it? Our m here into b1 and m1. Um, we saw that m1 has to be a square, and we wrote it like this. Okay, basically nothing special happened. But since we're only interested um, in the x-coordinate and not at all in the y-coordinate, and we're only interested in everything modulo squares, this m and this e is not interesting for us. So we can basically forget about this. And here, before, um, alpha of x and y would uh, just be um, uh, m. And now it's b1, which is smaller, um, since b1 is a factor of m. So, but why did we do this? Um, what we did for this was we found the greatest common divisor of our m, which was the x-coordinate, and our b. Of course, if we look, if we would look at each, um, at all the points that we have, um, then we would also have to go through all the m that we have. But since uh, our b is given from our equation, um, this will of, uh, of definitely be a uh, factor that will bound our computations because we only have to look at primes or at factors of B. So let me write down how this helps us and how the um, how this leads to a computation of the image. Um, um, um. So what we did was we had some factorization uh, of B into B1 and B2 that depended, of course, on M. But if we just um, want to see independent of M what can happen, uh, then we just um, take all possible factorizations of B. So look at all. possible factorizations of B. Into two numbers. And not only primes, and also um, with minuses. So for, for example, mm -hmm. one would be one times one, but also minus one times minus one. So we have a, a lot of combinations. So then, for each possible pair, B1, B2, write down basically this. So in this equation, uh, this b is given, a is given, 
uh, and B2 is given. So this A is given from the equation of our elliptic curve. And B1 and B2 are just the possible factorizations of this B. Um, so we write down this equation. And if we find N or capital N, capital M, and E such that there's a solution, capital N, capital M, E, if there's a solution, then B1 is in the image of alpha. Why? Because then we have an actual rational point that comes from this computation here and leads to um, leads to uh, uh, alpha of x, y being x. But since x is b1 times m squared over e squared, then the, the image will be b1. Or, yeah, the image of the point will be b1, and b1 will be in the image of alpha. So this is our algorithm, our easy algorithm. We only have to take our b, which is given, factor it, in several ways, write down this equation, and solve it. The only problem is um, that there is no algorithm for such equations, and if there was, then we would have solved uh, all problems in math, because we could enumerate all the problems and then find a Diophantine equation for every problem, solve it, and translate it back. Well, that's the theory, of course, but yeah, there is no such algorithm. But, um, of course, in, um, in reality, if we have small numbers, uh, the small number b, and um, if we are lucky and there are only finitely many possibilities that we have to check uh, for this um, equation to be true, then this is actually an algorithm that works. So, um, the only problem is that it doesn't always work. So there, there can be equations where we just see um, with some B1 and B2 that there are infinitely many possible solutions that we would have to check and we cannot prove that um, uh, which ones are actually a solution or which ones we have to check and then we're finished. So um, it only works sometimes. But sometimes it works. So um, I will do an example now. And of course, in the exercises, you will also do examples. And yeah, I, I think it's very nice because the, the algorithm itself is really easy. Um, just with the hook that it not always comes to an end. But yeah, the, the exercises in the book are hopefully in such a way that <laughs> there is always a possibility to prove finiteness. Okay, the example. So the curve is x cubed minus x, so b is minus one and minus one has two factorizations, namely 1 times minus 1 and minus 1 times 1. <laughs> so we have two cases. B1 is equal to 1, B2 is equal to minus 1, and the other way around. Uh, <coughs> OK. 
Köln. Um, and um, of course, we have then also the same thing for uh, E-bar. Yeah, but we start with, uh, with E. Um, so, uh, now we could write down this equation for uh, the two cases, but here actually we don't need it because um, one is in the image anyway. Uh, so so if, we, if we write down this equation and check everything and find a solution, then the outcome would either be we have a solution, it is in the image, or there's no solution, it's not in the image. Um, but here for this B1, it is in the image anyway because um, we define that alpha of the point at infinity is 1. So 1 is in the image. And we don't have to care about this uh, case. And also, um, the point zero zero um, is sent to B. B is minus one. So this is also already in the image. We don't have to check anything. So, and since there are no more cases to check, we only have two uh, elements in the image. This is two. And now we have to uh, do the same thing for alpha bar, because we have a, a product there of both. So here we have B is four, and four has a lot of factorizations. So let me write a table. Namely, um, do you have an order here? No. Two, two, minus two, minus two, one, four, minus one, minus four, four, one, minus four, minus one. That's it, yeah. Okay. Okay. So those are the different cases. Now let's look at which cases we actually have to consider. So 4 and minus 4 are in Q mod the squares are the same as these two. Um, so we don't have, we, we only have to check one of those. Um, so we only have to care for the first four. And um, here, again, um, we have the case that that um, as before here, there are in the image, so B is four, which is uh, mod squares um, equivalent to one. So this B is uh, the image of zero, zero. And yeah, we cannot say more, only this one. So we have to check uh, those three cases for the equations. Um, let's call them one, two, three. Okay, one, we have the equation n squared is equal to two m cubed plus, well, a is zero here, and then we have two e to the fourth, the second one is the same with a minus. And the third one is minus 
m to the 4 minus e to the 4. I think this is correct, right? And to have a mind may be good. Um, well, n is not negative, but we don't care because we only have n squared here. Um, yeah, but every, of course, all of those are uh, greater or equal to zero. So don't, they don't uh, have a solution. This is positive. This is all negative. And um, m is not zero. And n should also be not zero, because um, then we would be in this case. So m and n are not zero. So here we have no solution. since they are not zero. OK, so we have to look at um, this one. And the thing is, we don't have to find all the solutions. We only have to um, decide whether there is at least one solution or no solution. So here we prove there are no solutions. And here we can actually um, find a solution, namely um, 2 squared is 2 times 1 cubed plus 2 times uh, 2 to the 4. So this is 4 is 2 plus 2. So we have one solution. We don't have to care um, for more solutions. Since more solutions would only lead to more points being sent to, um, to this B1, um, and we don't care about that. We only care about the fact, is B1 in the image or not? So um, 1 was uh, B1 equal to 2. Let me write at least. So B1 equal to 2 is in the image. And therefore, we have, again, two elements in the image. We have two and one. Ah, this is all with a bar. one and two, and it has size two. So we have that two to the r is two times two over four is equal to one. So it has rank 0. And I, I think there is uh, either a conjecture or a theorem that says um, roughly half of elliptic curves have rank 0, half have rank 1, and a 0 set has rank more than 1. I think the, the expected value is 1 half for the rank of a curve. But yeah, I'm, I'm not totally sure, but it's roundabout like that. Okay, I was uh, much faster than I thought. <laughs> because I, th I, I was actually scared that I wouldn't get through with this uh, algorithm and that you couldn't have exercises. Uh, but I got through and have this example. And yeah, let's finish very early today. Thank you. If you have questions, then you can also ask questions.